some of my friends who who are some of the best developers I know are like, this is amazing. It removes and they find all the grunt work. Just it removes grunt work. It just makes them faster. Yeah. Xcode is the only major IDE right now that doesn't have some sort of chat GPT. Microsoft call theirs Copilot. Everybody I know who's a developer who's used this stuff is blown away by it. Xcode doesn't have anything like that built in. But what if I told you that you actually can have a Copilot in Xcode right now? I've got Xcode 14.3 and I found this project called Copilot for Xcode. Is that not fitting or what? Let's try this out. I'll link to this repo down below if you want to test it out yourself and let me know how it goes. First of all, brew install. If you don't know what this is, I have a video on the whole installation and setup for your Mac. Brew is basically homebrew. It allows you to install software from the command line. So I'm going to run that right there. Copilot for Xcode was successfully installed. You need to enable the extension by going to system settings, privacy and security. Down here at the bottom, you have extensions and it says to look for Xcode source editor but I don't see that here. It's not running yet. So it needs to start up some kind of agent that runs in the background. To get to it, you need to go to your applications folder and it's gonna be right here, Copilot for Xcode. It's a program. So you got to run it. And here you'll get a notice as background items added. If you don't trust this thing, you can download the source code yourself and build it from scratch. That's one thing you can do. It's open source. You can check out the source code. Path to node. Now the default value is just node. So you don't have to do that, I guess. So I'm going to leave that alone. Now you do need to set up two accounts. One is your Copilot account. You need to have that. The other one is your OpenAI account because it's going to talk to the OpenAI API so it can generate the code for you. So I'm gonna go over here to Copilot. It says server unavailable. Please make sure you have installed Node. And I'm glad I ran into this because it's not detecting my Node environment. If I go to my command line and run Node dash dash version, it's there, but it doesn't know where it is. So maybe I need to help it out. I'm gonna say which Node and I'm gonna give it this right here. I am using NVM for Node, so it's probably not in its default location. That's okay. I'm gonna copy this path and put that right there, path to Node. If you don't know how to install Node or use NVM to do that, I have a video which I'll link down below shows you how to do that too. You got to click reload launch agent when you give it the path to Node. And then I'm going to click on sign in here with Copilot. Authorize GitHub Copilot plugin. Congratulations, you're all set. The device is now connected. It looks like I'm okay. Now I need my open API key. To do that, we're going to go to platform openapi.com and you do need an account with OpenAI, of course. Click on your picture here on the right, view API keys. I have a couple set up. I'm going to create a new one. This one is for Copilot Xcode and create secret key. I will be deleting this after this video, so don't bother. Don't bother trying this. This tool will go and query OpenAI's API. Editor Alex here. It's not free to use OpenAI's API, but as I've discovered after doing this test, it's super, super cheap, and I'll show you how much this whole experiment cost me. Also, I've got my friend Ivars, who's gonna show you how to avoid using OpenAI API altogether. He's got a workaround, and I'm gonna show that to you in a little bit. There's my OpenAI key. I get to select the model, and temperature is basically uh, the amount of creativity you give it. So if you wanna go all the way up to here, it's gonna be really creative. If you go down to here, it's not gonna be. So I'm gonna leave it by default at 0.7, and then max message count, that's fine. Since this is the first time I'm using it, I actually don't know what the best options are. So you can check it out yourself. Now I need to enable the extension. So go to settings, privacy and security, and then down at the bottom extensions. And then there it is. Xcode source editor, not enabled. I need to enable it. I'm going to put a check mark there and done. <sighs> Now we're going to try it out, but I need to take a breath first. It says granting permissions to the app. We're not done yet. Oh, first time the app is open and command run, extension will ask you for the necessary permissions. Now to do this, I need to go to privacy and security and then accessibility. And over here, there's a list of programs. You need to add this Copilot for Xcode program. So I'm going to go back to it, reveal extension and finder. There it is. It's an app and I'm going to drag this over here and drop it into that list. It's going to require a password. So I'm going to do that unlock and it needs to be turned on. Make sure that's on and this should be all, right? I just want to try it. Okay, so here it gives you some commands, how to get suggestions, previous suggestion, next suggestion, accept suggestions. Let's give this a try. Oh, this is exciting. I'm going to go to Xcode, create a new project, app, next, Copilot app and Swift UI, next. That's fine. Here we are. So this is uh, just the basic hello world in Swift. Let's say I want to add, I don't know, a text field at the top here. Oh, 
It's asking me, Copilot for Xcode wants access to control system events, allowing control to prevent the blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna say yes, because that's what I wanna do. I wanna use it. So how do I invoke it? So apparently you need to set up key bindings in order to trigger the extension. To do that, we're gonna go to Xcode and then settings, and then go to key bindings. And over here, you can search for Copilot should be on the list there. And there they are. So get suggestions doesn't have a key binding yet. So we need to do that. And I'm going to accept their suggestions for now. You can pick whatever key bindings you want, but it's option question mark for getting suggestions. So let's start with just that one. And the suggestions are listed here on the GitHub page. Suggestions for getting suggestions and accepting suggestions. I'm using the word suggestion a lot. It's too much. The reason these were picked is because they don't have um, conflicts with other ones. So let's try that. I'm going to go over here back to my code and press option shift question mark and I get another question from Copilot for Xcode. Would you like to access your Dropbox folder or your desktop folder? Oh sure, do it. Hey, look at that. There it is. And the suggestion is to create a button here. You want to create a button? Fine, create a button. I'm going to click on accept. It gave me a comment. Let's try this again. I want some code. If it's not generating the code, perhaps it's Swift, but I know ChatGPT can do Swift because I've done it before. So it's not that. Let's try this explain selection thing. So I'm gonna need to create a new key binding for that. And let's go down here and select this. Let's do explain selection. Okay, look at that, explaining selection. Explain the code concisely. Do not interpret or translate it. The code defines a vertical stack with an icon of a globe and text saying hello world. <laughs> that is in fact what's going on. I really wish I could generate some code here. So I'm gonna try chatting with this thing. Augment the code to add text input. Let's try that. Here's the modified code that adds text field to the V stack. This right here is super cool. It's right there inside your editor. Now I can copy it from here and paste it in. Uh, it's complaining because dollar text is undefined. So let's have it explain that. Why am I getting an error about dollar text? The variable text has not been declared or defined yet. Exactly. Dollar text is shorthand syntax for a binding object that allows the text field to read and write the value. Show me how to define the variable. Boom. And I'm purposely being vague here to see if it's gonna accept that context and allow me to add the proper syntax inside the context that I'm working with. So yeah, it's doing it, check it out. It's not only showing me how to define the variable text, but it's showing me inside the context of my program. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste it in here. Oh, there is a complaint. Attribute private can only be used in non-local scope. Let's take out that attribute. Hopefully now we're good to go. And yes, look at that. We now have a text field in here. And if I bind it to something initially, there it is. Let's try just defining a variable. And I'm gonna start with, um, I don't know, state var, my name is a string. I mean, I'm already doing most of the work, right? Let's see if this triggers any kind of help. Aha! <laughs> Wait a minute, I wasn't expecting that. So it's showing me how to complete that line, but it also guessed that my name is Alex. That's creepy. <laughs> I'm gonna accept that one. Now I just noticed that in the menu bar at the top, I have a little wheel here and I can check for updates here and I can also enable real-time suggestions. This is what I was looking for. Maybe I was just dumb and I didn't realize that, that you could do that. So let's try this. State var uh, my, oh, <laughs> look at that my last name. Yes. Wow. Wow. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Look at that. The suggestions are changing and popping up right on the spot. And it even guessed my last name. Something's fishy going on here. I don't know. How does it know that? I'm going to accept that. And if I do my previous test where I type in a comment that says create a text input, sure enough, it does it right there. Text field, enter your name, text. I'm gonna accept that. There is my text field with my name in it. This thing works and it works pretty well. If you're learning how to use Swift and how to build Swift UI projects, this is really cool because you're getting inline help 
right there on the spot. I'm really enjoying this. This is actually really impressive. So you have to pay for Copilot, which is $10 a month, but there's ways to get it for free if you're a student or if you're uh, in an organization that's doing open source projects. And you're gonna be paying pay per use for the open API, which seems to be not super expensive right now. Editor Alex here, and about how much it cost me to do this whole experiment. It cost me nothing. Here is my usage dashboard for April, and I shot that video on April 26th. I've been using the API all throughout the month of April and I've only accumulated $2.86. That includes using AutoGPT, which is another little tool you might have heard about. So on April 26, I got nothing. Now as promised, here's Ivars with his workaround to avoid using open APIs. Open, open AI APIs. <clears throat> to avoid using open AI's APIs and just use Copilot. Hey Alex, I was here. Here is how you can do that with VS Code and Xcode switching back and forward. Okay, let's open VS Code and Xcode side by side. On my right, the project is opened in the Xcode. We have Notification Manager, the same class here in VS Code. And let's say I would like to get some suggestions from GitHub Copilot. Let's add, let's say, training reminder function. And GitHub Copilot will try his best to suggest what I would like to do, save in VS Code. And here it is, now I have in the Xcode as well. And now I can build or run the project to test this function. But for now I will just add comment to see how it will show in the VS Code. And when I'm clicking back to the VS Code, I already have this file updated here and I have this <laughs> very important uh, comment here. I like this workflow and it is working rapidly fast. Great workflow. Thanks for the tip, Ivars. If you want to see Ivars' channel, he's got a lot of Xcode related videos and iOS development videos on his channel. I'll link to him down below. If you like this video, let me know in the comments down below. Or you can hit the thumbs up, which is really easy to do. And it helps me out quite a bit. If you like this kind of content in general, you can consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you next time.